accessory now this is the 11th cranial now it is motor now and this has two roots the cranial root and the spinal root now the next is functional component the functional component for the cranial root is special visceral efferent this takes origin from the nucleus ambiguous and the motor fibers they distribute along with the vagus to the muscles of the palate pharynx and to the larynx then the next one is spinal root the spinal root is again the special visceral efferent this takes origin from the long spinal nucleus which is situated in the spinal cord on the lateral part of the anterior gray horn of the spinal cord uh, which is extending from c1 to c5 segments then the next one is nuclei the nuclei for the accessory that is for the cranial part is nucleus ambiguous this is this is situated on the medulla and the long spinal nucleus which is present over the uh, spinal cord which is extending from c1 to c5 spinal segment on the lateral part of the anterior gray horn then the next is about the cause and relations now uh, we will study the cause and relation separately for the cranial part and the spinal part first we will take the cranial part its cause and relation now for the cranial part the cranial part it takes origin from the nucleus ambiguous its lower part and gets attaches to the posterolateral sulcus of the post this is the posterolateral sulcus of medulla gets attaches to the posterolateral sulcus just below to the 10th cranial now then this nerve it runs laterally and enters into the intermediate compartment of the jugular foramen for a short distance there this get joins with the spinal root then at the exit again this two roots get separated and this cranial part they join joins with the vagus now just below to the inferior ganglion and through the vagus it gets distributed through the following branches one is pharyngeal branch recurrent laryngeal branch and the cardiac branch now this pharyngeal through this pharyngeal branch it supplies to the muscles of pharynx except the stylopharyngeus muscle and to the muscles of the soft palate except the tensor valle palatini muscle and through this recurrent laryngeal it supplies to the intrinsic muscles of the larynx except the cricothyroid muscle the cricothyroid is supplied by the external laryngeal now and through the cardiac branch it supplies to the cardio inhibitory fibers over the heart this is about the cranial part of the accessory its cause and distribution next we will move to the spinal part it cause and distribution the spinal part it takes origin from the long spinal nucleus which is extending from c1 to c5 spinal segment and after it takes its origin this now it runs upward and laterally by passing through the foramen magnum through this foramen magnum the medulla continue down as a spinal cord just beneath to the fourth part of the vertebral artery then this now runs laterally to enter into the intermediate compartment of the jugular foramen within the intermediate compartment for a short distance it get joins with the cranial part at the exit it leaves and it runs downward and backward by crossing by going deep to the internal jugular vein and crossing superficially the occipital artery then accompanying the lower sternomastoid branch of the occipital artery then it descends downward and backward by passing deep to the styloid process stylohyoid muscle and the posterior belly of the digastric muscle then it runs downward and backward and goes deep to the sternocleidomastoid muscle and it enters into the posterior triangle at, uh, that is at the middle of the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid at that level this nerve is hooked upward by the lesser occipital now in the posterior triangle this nerve runs downward and backward on the levator scapulae muscle and goes deep to the trapezius just 5 cm above to the clavicle and supplies to the trapezius muscle thereby ends this is about the spinal part and its course now next is about the branches of the spinal part the spinal part it gives off two branches one is communicating branch another one is distributing branch now we will go with the communicating branch of the spinal part it gives oh, one communicating branch to the c2 fibers just deep to the sternocleidomastoid and within the posterior triangle it gives communicating branch to c2 and c3 and deep to the trapezius it gives one communicating branch to c3 and c4 so these are the communicating branches and the next one is about the distributing branches that is it gives muscular branch to the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscle 
that is about the cause and relations of both parts next we will move to the applied anatomy if there is any central irritation over the accessory now that result in the spasm over the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius uh, sorry uh, uh, both muscles that causes the spasmodic torticollis then the next this accessory now can be tested by asking the patient to struck the shoulder again resistance for the trapezius and for the sternocleidomastoid ask the patient to turn the chin to the opposite side against resistance that's all about uh, the accessory now thank you